In today's video, I'll be removing the straps that come on the HasLab Proton Pack and attempt to fit an LC1, LC2, and modern day LC1 equivalent frame to the pack using the included hardware. Switch me on. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack it is not a toy. My name is Matt. And as I said, today I'll be test fitting three different kinds of Alice frames here on the HasLab Proton Pack. Before I get started with that, one thing I didn't do in the video where I reviewed and demonstrated the pack was actually try it on. So before I take these straps off, I'm going to try it on, show you what it looks like on me, and then you'll be able to see the differences as I change out the frames and then subsequently put those on so you can see the differences. All right, the first thing I notice when putting this pack on for the first time with these straps is that they had these test fitted with Phoebe in mind, it looked like, because I had to let out pretty much the whole strap extension on that portion there. There is some at the top that I have not let out that I could if I wanted to. But then if I do that, the padded part moves farther down and it's not actually on my shoulder and providing any support. So while these straps are okay, um, in my opinion, they're definitely something that can go and is easy to replace if you can find a suitable LC1 frame to slap onto your pack. And it does sit kind of low because of the way that I do have it um, strapped on. It could be higher up if I pulled these out, but then it wouldn't fit as comfortably on my shoulders. So let's try swapping it out with some of these other frames. First, let's look at the hardware. Each pack comes with a bag of hardware that includes two long bolts, 10 short bolts, two black spacers, and five brackets. Here you see the brackets on the left and the right are for the horizontal bar, while the ones in the middle are all different sizes, and those are for the upright bar. Next, we need to remove the strap so that we can put the frame on. To do that, you just slide the extra webbing through the plastic bit there, and then it will come right out. And I was very close to actually having this come out by the way that I adjusted it and didn't realize it. So this could easily come undone while you're wearing it if you're not careful. So if you keep the default straps on, you might put a clothespin or something in the webbing to keep it at your normal size so that over time the webbing does not slide through these plastic sliders when you don't intend it to and you don't want your pack falling off your shoulders and hitting the floor. See, I couldn't even find the end of it because it was already at the edge. So that would be a good idea to put something on those like a clothespin or a safety pin to keep those from falling off. On the kidney pad, it's the same thing. You just slide the webbing through the plastic slider. And it comes right out. We'll take off the buckle and the slider. and then pull it through in the slots on the pack. There we go. Two clips, two sliders.
One kidney pad removed. I turned it around on the stand. It's not super stable like this, so I don't encourage you to leave your pack backwards like this and work on it. But just to show you that there are holes for the brackets already in the back of the pack. There are larger holes here at the bottom for this, the spacers and the larger bolts. And then on the upright section, there are three positions. And then on the horizontal bar, you have two options to attach your pack right there with the included hardware. The first frame I'm going to attempt to mount to this pack is this Rothko mil spec frame that you can buy on Amazon. I've already done multiple videos on this particular frame and the padding on it and the straps here on the channel. So check my previous videos. And if you have any questions on which frame is which, then you can check out my Alice Frame 101 video and that'll help answer all of your questions. The easiest way to identify this frame is by this 90 degree angle here on this cutout. And that helps to identify this frame from the genuine LC1 frames uh, just at a quick glance. So this will be the first one I attempt to fit here on the back of the pack. Once I have it fit, I'll try it on and then I'll take it off and try the LC1 and the LC2. I'm going to start with the longer bolts and the spacers that will go here on the two bottom holes. On the back of each of the frames you will see these long slots and that is where these go. You will have the bolt go through this side of the long slot. The spacer would be behind that and then the pack will be on this side. So I'm showing it to you backwards. You may not be able to see well with the way I have the kidney pad on here. So I do apologize for that. But again, start with the bolt, slide it through the slot, like so. Then the spacer, and then there's a little inset portion there, just around where the bolt goes. Kind of give room for the spacer to fit in to the pack. At first glance, I'm noticing that these bolts seem kind of short. There's not a whole lot of room for them to grip on the pack side. If you have the spacers on there, I'm sure, obviously, if you take the spacers off, it might be better to do it that way, to just slide the, the spacer in first, then put the bolt in through the slot. I just have these hand tightened in there. They are set up to where you can attach them with a Phillips head screwdriver, but there's not a whole lot of room for you to reach. So you probably have to have either some kind of angled head or just use the end of a drill bit and use that to tighten it down because you do have that bar in the way on the frame itself. Having it a little bit loose will allow it to slide back and forth and allow you to line up your middle brackets. The next ones I'm going to put on are the ones for the sides. And these are the only two that are the same size. The other ones are either taller or shorter in how that they sit off of the pack. These are much shorter little bolts, little screws. And you'll see the bracket fits right here on the strap. These will be easier to use your screwdriver on. Which I'm actually going to do on these.
I'm not gonna tighten these super tight again because I'm going to take it off. But like I said, if you just take out a small bit like this, you can use that on the back side of your larger bolts to help tighten those without trying to squeeze a screwdriver in there. I'll get two more into the opposite side. Okay, so now I have the two bolts here on the bottom and then the two brackets on either side of the horizontal bar. That leaves these three brackets of different heights for the middle section. With the frame as I have it set up right now with the spacers on there, this shortest bracket is not sitting flush against the motherboard on e any of the actual sections. The second biggest one does fit pretty flush on these top two sections and stains off quite a bit on the bottom one. So I can use the largest one to brace the bottom. And if I have to pick one of these final two spots to put this brace, I'm going to put it at the highest one. So I'll only be using the two braces in this scenario. So there's the top brace. Then I'll use the largest brace here on the bottom section there. So again, I'm only using the four brackets, two on each side, one on the top and one on the bottom, in addition to the spacers and the bolts on the bottom of the frame itself. Now let's try it on. All right, as you can see, I have this frame on. Again, it has the neck padding on there. You can see the gap in between the frame and the pack itself, which is a lot more correct. I took the wand off so it wouldn't be in the way, so you might notice that's missing. But these are the frames and the straps that are accurate to the Afterlife pack. So this is the frame and strap setup that I am going to use on this pack. However, I might not leave it mounted this way. I might make some changes which I'll put in future videos if I decide to do so. Now that we have seen this one, let's try putting on the LC1 frame. The next frame I'll test fit is this LC1 frame. This is a genuine military used frame. You can see this one is different from the one that I used before. The Rothko one had the very right angle right here whereas this has more of a triangle shape. And that's how you can easily identify this as an LC1. Also the smaller kidney pad and the straps give it away. But for the frame itself, that little angle is what you're going to want to look for. You'll also notice that it's more robust metal and more heavy duty. These are accurate to the hero packs from Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, whereas the LC2 is for the semi-hero packs from Ghostbusters 2. So let's see how this one fits. This should be very similar to the one that we just tried. So again, we have the bolt coming out through, then the spacer on that, and then see what I was talking about. There's just this tiny little nub that is left to go into the nut on the inside of the pack. There's not a whole lot there to grip. So as I try to hand tighten this, there's not a whole lot where it actually hangs on. But if you have these other braces on, the ones that are on the horizontal crossbar are going to hold a lot of the stress that I've noticed even though that that is not technically an accurate mounting point. So you can see that that didn't really hang on very tightly. 
or tightly at all. I had to actually take this down, put it down flat, and then attach the bottom bolts to get them to stay and be secure because the threads are so short on it. I was having trouble doing it on the upright stand, so you might want to try that yourself. Okay, so now we will see how these other brackets fit on the LC1 frame. I have these straps behind it just to kind of be out of the way, but if I need to, I can angle this back. So I'm going to use the side brackets first. Again, the side brackets are the least accurate part of this setup. There are no side brackets on any of the screen used movie packs. And looks like this one might be set just a little too high to where I'm not going to be able to get that side bracket in there because it will sit on the bar. It actually won't even hook on the bar. So I could probably bend it a little bit, but even if I did, it doesn't line up with the holes here. That one's up just barely a little bit above the bar, and this one's too far down. And the bracket have it has it where they should be even. So on this setup, we're just going to have to do the middle brackets. Again, not a huge deal because on the screen use packs, they didn't have any brackets on this middle bar on this horizontal bar. They did have them on the upright bar. So let's see which ones will fit and where on the upright bar. Get these straps a little bit out of the way so they'll sit flat. So if you wanted to on this one, you could use the smallest bracket here at the top and the middle bracket in the second position, it appears. So that it's not sitting completely flush there. And then the larger one, again, would go on the bottom. So in a standard LC2 frame, or I'm sorry, LC1 frame, you can use all three bracket setups here on the middle. But for this particular frame that I have, the, if you have them set up with the bolts in the bottom, then the side brackets aren't going to fit. If you would rather use the side brackets than the ones in the bottom, that's an option. You just won't be able to do both at the same time. Uh, either way, they're going to hold it where it's not going to move up and down. So let's tighten these that I have here on the upright, and then I'll try it on again. Before I try it on, let me just show you that I'm having trouble getting this middle one to sit flush. It's like the bar is too wide there, and I can't get it to sit flush on both sides at the same time. Up here, it seems to fit better, but down here for some reason it won't. So your sizes may vary. Again, I'm just going to go with the top and the bottom on this one because of that issue. And then it should work and be fine that way again just having those two braces which is pretty much the same setup i had on the rothko frame as here on the lc1 so again let's try it on now and see how it fits this one feels more comfortable to me than the previous one just with the strap setup but um i don't know that there's a main major difference you can tell that where I had the waist strap previously set was before the holidays because I filled out a little bit. And again, you can see there is a gap in between the pack itself and the frame. And this is the LC1. So I'm happy with the way this one looks. Even if all of the brackets didn't fit the right way, it is something that is acceptable. The ones that are in there are going to hold it in place and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about it if you can't use all of the brackets. Now I'm going to take this one off and we'll try to fit the LC2, although that I've seen rumors 
that the LC2 won't fit, I'm going to find out for myself. This is an LC2 frame. This is what is accurate to the semi-hero packs in Ghostbusters 2. You'll notice that this bar here in the middle stands further back. That is the main difference you're going to notice between the LC1 and LC2 frames. Aside from color, this one is painted black. A lot of times you'll find them in green or desert tan. These are military pieces of equipment. You can find it in Army Navy stores and places like that. They're going to be more prevalent in the wild than the LC1 frames and packs. So hopefully this will fit on its own, and if not, we can figure out a way to make it fit. Okay, I can see the problem with the LC2 now that I tried to get it to fit. I do have the two bottom bolts here in the bottom of the frame. Again, if you would rather use the ones here on the sides, then they don't line up the way the same way that the LC1 didn't line up. This one is too close to the bar at the top where the bolt would go through and this would be too far away. So the relationship doesn't work between where these are set compared to where these are set. So you can pick one or the other. The issue I'm noticing is these don't sit flush on the bar, much like that middle one that I tried on the LC1. Um, the same goes for the upright frame. If I'm trying to put any of these on here, this Large one is the closest to fitting, but it still doesn't fit all the way flush. It could be because this is painted, just making that small little difference. Um, but none of the three fit completely around it. Um, if they were to fit, the one that is the smallest would be the best bet to go here at the top, it appears. And then the largest one would probably fit right here right underneath the crossbar and be your best bet there it's too far off here at the bottom this almost fits on underneath so what you can do i'm not going to do it with mine but if you are to just grind or sand down the sides of your upright bar right here just enough you don't do have to do much but then you could make these brackets fit there on the top and on the middle and then your LC2 frame should work and so that's not a very big deal and don't give up if you have an LC2 frame you can just make that very small modification just grinding down just a little bit on like I said on either side and then these brackets should go right on there and hold up just as well you're not going to weaken your frame substantially just by grinding down just a little bit on each side there. I wouldn't worry about that. In fact, talking about weakening the frame, you can see this one has a hole that goes all the way through here in the middle because the correct setup or the accurate setup for these frames on Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, they had the two bolts here at the bottom with about one inch spacers. These spacers with the, if you include the little inset where it kind of sits into the pack a little bit, makes it only stand off about three quarters of an inch. About an inch standoff is what they had in the movies. And then a gear at, again, here at the top, it was like a little bit over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter at the most. And they had the two here, and then they drilled a hole in the actual frame and mounted it to the motherboard on the pack right there on Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. They had two different kind of spacers in the movies, but I'm not going to talk about that here. I'm just saying that drilling a hole through the pack and the frame uh, is a possibility. If that's something that you uh, want to do, I would say you need to open it up and look at it from the inside before you try to do something like that because you need to know what's on the other side here. If you drill through the pack right here, what are you going to hit? Are you going to damage anything? And then you have to have some way to tighten it or brace it on the opposite side. That might be something that I explore here on the channel, but for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. If you want to use the bracket setup for the frames, then you can pretty much use 
I could use four out of five on the Rothko frame. I could use two out of five for the LC1, and then none of these fit without modifying or sanding or grinding down uh, the upright frame a little bit on uh, the LC2. And if you wanted to do a little work here to try to get those side brackets to fit, you would have to grind down a lot more. I wouldn't really be comfortable with that, but it's up to you. My other suggestion would be uh, maybe consider finding some longer bolts to go through the bottom because these barely dig in and grip um, either shorter spaces, spacers or longer bolts would probably make this uh, a lot more stable. Uh, but that's what I've got. That's what I've found out. For my setup, I'm going to switch it back over to the Rothko frame. And then, like I said, I'll consider maybe mounting it correctly as we do see in the movies. I didn't talk about Afterlife, but Afterlife, again, has a hole here. And it actually has one that goes behind the neck roll here at the top to connect it. And there's spacers on all four points of connection. Thank you guys for watching. Just one more thing before I sign off. I've seen it said that once you put the frame on the pack, that you can't use the stand that comes with the pack. And I found that's not the case. So let me turn this around to the side. And you'll see that you have to take the kidney pad area right here and slide it over the back of the upright part of the stand right there. And that will go on this side. And then the pack will line up with the groove right there in the bottom like it normally would without having the frame on it. So that's all you got to do. You just got to pull this part back a little bit. You don't have to loosen it or anything. It'll just slide right over. And then pop your pack down on the normal groove on the front. And it'll fit just right. So you can still have a frame on it and display it on your HasLab frame. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll have more mods coming up. Have a great day.